Nonlinear materials. This is a huge subject worthy of a class all in all on its own. And so I am not going to do this topic justice. I just wanna to touch on a few key things that I think will help you understand things later in this course. So first we'll talk about the electric polarization. And this is really how we account mathematically for nonlinear properties. We'll talk about something called the potential well description. And we'll talk about symmetric versus non-symmetric potential wells. I'll touch on some applications and make some observations. And then that will be it for this video. So a nonlinear material, this really entails how an electric field polarizes the material. So it makes sense that we would start with the equation of calculating the material polarization from the electric field. And so far, I'm showing the equation of what we've talked about up to now. And this is just a linear relationship. And really, this means if we double the strength of the electric field, we double how much the material has been polarized. That's a linear relationship. Well, if the electric field becomes intensive, intense enough, that linear relationship breaks down and it becomes nonlinear. So we can't describe it with that equation alone anymore. So in the absence of knowing anything else, the easiest thing to do is to expand this into a polynomial. And that, of course, describes a nonlinear behavior here. And so as E becomes very intense, these other higher order terms become more dominant and now we actually have a nonlinear polarization to an applied electric field. So what I'm showing in blue, that's the linear response. Uh, what's in red, that's the nonlinear response. And so the linear response, we have what we would call the chi one or what we've been just calling the electric susceptibility. But over here for the nonlinear response, we have our chi two, chi three, and I suppose it'd be chi four, chi five, chi six, uh, but chi-2 and chi-3 are the most commonly discussed things. And we can look at the units. Our chi-1 has no units. Chi-2 has units of meters per volt. Uh, chi-3, meters squared per volt squared, and, and so on. So that's how we'll describe nonlinear materials. And people that do nonlinear stuff all the time, they're constantly talking about, hey, what's the chi-1? What's the chi-2? And I'll also mention that all materials are nonlinear. It's just that in some materials, these chi-2, chi-3, chi-4 parameters, they're large enough that we can experience these nonlinear material properties at lower electric field values than, than other materials. Uh, but all materials will eventually become nonlinear, although many of them will break down at about the same time they're becoming nonlinear. So that, of course, is not useful. Many times when we're thinking about nonlinear materials, we like to describe it with its potential well. So remember what's happening. We have an electron cloud floating around its nucleus and we apply an electric field and that electron cloud uh, gets stretched away and there's a certain displacement distance. So potential here, this is the push and then the horizontal axis is the displacement. So if we have a linear relationship going on here, we will get a parabolic function, a parabolic potential well. And anytime we have a parabolic potential well, that is describing harmonic oscillation. And if we were to plot R as a function of time, we'd get perfect cosines or perfect sines. Well, if the material is nonlinear, it turns out we really only see a parabolic potential well here. As we drive it harder, uh, this displacement becomes nonlinear, and it doesn't necessarily look exactly like this. That's just what I happen to be drawing to, to represent something that's, that's nonlinear. And this leads to anharmonic oscillation. So we don't get perfect sines and cosines anymore. And we might get something that looks sort of like this. That's kind of a, in this case, sort of a truncated sine or cosine. But since that is not a perfect sine or cosine anymore, if we were to look at the frequency content of it, what we see is we get a spectrum of sines and cosines. And this happens all the time. You'll send one frequency into nonlinear material and we get a bunch of different frequencies out. Uh, normally, uh, a fre uh, frequency doubling or frequency tripling is what's strongest. Uh, gets, this does still happen. We get frequency quadrupling and quintupling and, and so on, but it's so weak, it's, it's hardly measurable. There are non-symmetric potential wells. And what this means is we're able to push charge to one side more easily than the other. So even if each half is parabolic, 
Uh, it's an asymmetric potential well. And so what happens is as we have an oscillating electric field, the charges are spending more time on one side than the other. And so this sort of cosine is looking function actually spends more time uh, being positive than it does negative, And we get a DC component to the electric field. And there's a phenomenon called optical rectification. And that's exactly why that's happening. A, a electromagnetic wave traveling through something with a non-symmetric potential well will generate a DC voltage that can be measured. So here's the applications. Well, the Chi-1, uh, never really called just Chi-1. This is our ordinary material. Of course, there's all kinds of applications that, that people study all over the place. It's a bit more rare to study the nonlinear material properties. The Chi-2, the Chi-2 is the uh, asymmetric potential wells. And so we get this optical rectification where you get this DC offset. Since it's nonlinear, we also get frequency doubling. There's parametric mixing. If we send two different frequencies into something that's nonlinear, we'll get the sum and difference frequencies out. So we can do heterodyning and stuff like that. Uh, Pockel's effect, where we're introducing birefringence to an applied electric field. The Chi-3, this is symmetric, but still nonlinear. And a very interesting effect is called the Kerr effect. And that's where the dielectric constant or refractive index depends on intensity. And this leads to a neat thing called self-focusing. And imagine shining a beam into this nonlinear medium, and the beam is brightest in the middle. Well, if that increases the refractive index where it's brightest, now suddenly we're gonna get sort of a lens function that we've induced in that. And what's that gonna do? Well, that's gonna start focusing or concentrating that beam, which then amplifies the lens function and it, it really, it self-focuses and you can actually blow materials up this way. Uh, third harmonic generation. So we can generate very short wavelength waves by going to the third harmonic. And other cool things that I wish I could get into, but I really just wanna give you a taste of what's going on here with nonlinear materials. So I wanna leave you with some final notes about nonlinear materials. The first thing is all materials are nonlinear. It's just that some have higher chi two, chi three, chi four parameters. And so we get to experience those nonlinear properties with weaker electric fields. But even those in general, it takes very intense electric fields to observe the nonlinear properties. And that's a problem. And we can overcome it somewhat by taking, you know, wide beams and concentrating them down. But it's still very difficult sometimes to have these intense electric fields. And then we have to deal with the thermal issues and all that. At radio frequencies, the most materials tend to break down before they become nonlinear. And that means you're actually breaking the electrons away from the atom. And now they're free to conduct and we get arcing and smoke and fire and all kinds of crazy things. So it's less common to talk about nonlinear materials at radio frequencies, although we can still find some. Uh, so, but the nonlinear properties of materials are much more commonly exploited at optical frequencies. We're closer to the resonances. It's easier to drive the, the, the or bring out the nonlinear material properties from them.